This podcast is presented by the Petite Victory Collective. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Modular Stories. In this podcast I would like to create a platform for people to share themselves, their stories, their experiences and their life lessons. My goal with this podcast is to inspire the listeners, spark the creativity and to share these incredible people I get to talk to with the world. Are we ready? I hope you enjoy it. All right. Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Modular Stories. Today I have Johannes with me. Would you like to tell a bit about yourself? Sure thing. Uh, hi, I'm Johannes. Uh, I'm a product designer in year two uh, right now at Artes. Um, I come from Germany, uh, Cologne to be specific. I have a carpentry background. Um, so I did an apprenticeship as a carpenter and then I moved into design. And uh, now I'm sort of finding my way here at Artes. Uh, it's an experience. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's different from what I expected in the beginning, but it's okay. Very nice. What did you expect? What is what is different? Um, in product design, I have a I have a friend who studies product design in Aachen, mm -hmm. and it's a city in Germany, a very famous for their engineering university, and uh, he studies in uh, Fachhochschule, which is like a I don't know the the international comparison. Some university, but, yeah, academy theme. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, next to the university, and uh, their product design study is quite uh, gray, in my opinion. All right. <laughs> uh, gray, as in maybe not color specifically, but as in uh, they're very market focused. They're doing things very technically and engineeringly like, um, and here. It's such a big contrast to that. Mm. It's very colorful, very free. Um, the other day I designed a plant uh, <laughs> or, uh, yeah, I don't know, a sticker, a sticker packet, um, a sticker package. It was really, really free, really colorful. No one really gives a shit about your function in the product. It's more... Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but I guess that's also a difference from from your carpentry study before, right? That is very much one hundred percent, bro. Doing what you have to bro, do, one hundred percent. Carpentry was, uh, you wake up at like six thirty, uh, sometimes seven, and then you get out of the house uh, before everyone else is awake in the house. Mm. You uh, you're out. You're, I was driving to carpentry with my bike, so it's like a thirty minute bike ride through. Hilly lands, so not <laughs> nether lands, uh, hilly lands, <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, then you're uh, at the job from eight to like six uh, ish, um, and it's, long. it's yeah, well, it's an hour break in between. It's like between eight and nine hours of work time, and then it also depends on what type of carpentry you're doing, right? I was yeah. in a very old-fashioned carpentry workshop, um, so I was alone with my boss. Uh, who turned 80 in the year I started. Wow. Yeah, he was, like, he was really fucking old, though. Um, but sorry, am I allowed to swear here, by the way? <laughs> sure, sure thing. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. no okay. worries. Um, he was very old and uh, still incredibly fit, though, for his age. Like, really, really impressive. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of... You come there, you get this, like, <laughs> get shit done, boy. Uh, type of atmosphere and uh, you work, you work, you work, you work for customers, you work for your boss, you work for some sort of client, client tree and uh, then you go home and it's you over. play video games and yeah, uh, yeah. go to bed or something uh, meeting friends it was also during the pandemic so meeting friends was a bit uh, sketchy it was a bit of a lonely time also quite a contrast to university here Fair. Right? Yeah. where it's a lot of fucking people from everywhere and uh, a lot of people your age as well so my previous <laughs> two and a half years was like me and then a three generation age gap uh to the person i was hanging around with all day <laughs> and now it's like I'm, i'm 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 seeing like almost a hundred people every day uh, that are my age and that are doing something creative uh, around me mm. so very very much a contrast yeah no i get that but i think it's also probably nice that you experience both sides so that you for example have still the discipline mm. from that job that you can now also apply to your studies here and kind of have the tools that you needed and the the skills that you needed yeah i think discipline is a good is a good 
point because I think you really need that in our study. Um, well, I'm not sh- I, I'm not sure whether like how the music structure is, but in product design, it's um, really much about if you're not the one really wanting to do it, and if you're not working on it, then no one will. Like everything in in student life, right? And then it's gonna be shit. And you can see that um, I myself am not the most disciplined at times. Uh, and then when I when I am, the quality of what I'm doing is just improving, like incredibly drastically. Yeah. Uh, um, and often it's also a matter of do I pass or not. It's just a matter of discipline of like putting through with what you have said to your mind, and then ex- like doing enough to explore enough to to get to a good result. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think for us it's a bit more. We have like exams in the end, and we have teachers that kind of drill us a bit more in like, hey, this is where we expect you to be, so practice mm-hmm. until you get there. Um, but I also think it's it's way harder if you don't have that, and if you just have to like self discipline and make sure that you are the one motivating yourself to do the work you yeah. want to do. Yeah, I mean, if you study an instrument, for instance, it's probably pretty much the exact same thing, right? You're also you you, you have like once a week or something, or maybe yeah. more often. I don't know. You have your tutors moment. Uh, your lesson and then the rest of the week is just on you buddy yeah uh, you have to do that and if you don't then <laughs> that's true but the difference is at least in the first year here you get kicked out if you don't yeah yeah you can get kicked out at the end if you don't get your yeah. things together that's interesting because um we were also supposed to get kicked out <laughs> like, like no 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 joke uh um i think we started the study with 38 people okay and we like we expected uh, like a drop off after the first year of like at least 30% of all mm. students um, because also in, in first year we are two separate classes that are running simultaneously so you have class A and class B uh, both approximately between 18 and 20 people per class mm. Okay. and then in second year you are mashing these two classes together so you expect to sort of like uh, lose yeah, half lower the numbers a little bit right um, now we lowered the numbers we went from like a 38 to a 26 now mm-hmm. but we're 26 in one class and it's still a lot yeah the way our class is structured is we have three hour classes for a course and in within these three hours the tutor ideally wants to speak to each student individually and assess uh, with them on their process of the mm-hmm. project uh, give insights, give tips, uh, give feedback, um, but also hear what the student has decided on. So if there's like a change in direction you want to take or change in approach. And if you're 26 people in three hours, that's like, uh, I did a calculation, it's like uh, seven minutes or something per person. So it's like... It's not much. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not giving guarantee on that number, by the way. Uh, um, <laughs> but it's not, it's not much. It's not much. Um, so... Yeah, it, it like one, in one of our classes, we've now uh, decided to split the entire class in half again, mm. um, which means that one half gets feedback in one week and the other half just doesn't. Uh, and then in next week, the other half gets. So you just have half the amount of lessons, which is sad. <laughs> to yeah, be honest. But, but I think there are also quality beats quantity if you if you need a certain amount of feedback to talk to people about projects mm, yeah sure sure might be might be but like in a week of process you can do a lot like mm. we just thought, we talked about that earlier right like yeah. if you, if you if you really work through a week uh, you can get a lot done and you can also move a lot from point a to point b and if it's two weeks you move even further so it might be that in your first feedback talk with a tutor you're at uh, i don't know alphabetically you're at point a uh, and then one week later you would be at point C but now you're at point F so it's like a it's like a twice as big of a jump and then it's hard for the tutor to sort of follow up yeah. with that like, oh, well, how did you get there What? Tell, talk to me about it but still I mean the class we're doing that right now is one of my favorite classes uh, currently yeah you're working on shoe design right uh, yeah but that's not the class <laughs> ah okay <laughs> So what is that class? Uh, and the class I was just talking about with the with the time uh, division is image archive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have um, a very interesting tutor uh, now in there, uh, Ernst van der Hoven. I'm probably 
butchered the the pronunciation on that. It's all right. Uh, he is um, the co-editor or like uh, yeah editor with one other person of the MacGuffin magazine, which is like a renovated uh, design magazine. Mm. Renovated? Can I say that word? I don't know. Like renowned, renowned, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, or or f famous uh, design magazine. Um, and that's interesting because the English Archive class is a little bit about making sort of a, well, as the name suggests, an, an archive of imagery mm. that sort of uh, speaks about you um, as a person, as a designer, and also about how we see things. Okay. Uh, for instance, the topic of my image archive is surfaces. Um, and I'm literally right now, I'm, I'm walking around the places and just taking pics of every little surface I find. So for instance, there's this little wheel on the mic here with the little gritty, bumpy texture, right? Which is in itself a very ordinary thing. And I feel like most people don't really think about that. But if you try to really look into it and feel it and try to get a gist of what, what the whole idea behind this wheel was, right? You have the gritty texture to sort of grip it well. You have this, uh, I don't know if it's steel or aluminium or whatever like this metal thing uh, the whole visual of it it reminds me a little bit of like a car tire or something mm. and there's a there's a story behind this as well of the production uh, as well as of the design of this so and it's just one it's just one surface and on this microphone stand alone there are like what 50 surfaces <laughs> so yeah and this one microphone stand and now look around where, where the fuck are we here like the amount of surfaces in this room Another thing I was I was thinking about within the image archive was this idea of that you never actually lose touch of a surface. If you think about it, you are, unless you're like, given the example, you are completely naked and you're mid-air, mm -hmm. uh, so detached from ground. Yep. Let's say you're falling out of a plane or you're jumping very long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, un unless that is the scenario, you will inevitably always touch at least one surface mm. at all times. Yeah. So on you right now, it's your watch, it's your t-shirt, it's your glasses, it's your pants, underwear, socks. You can debate about the shoes because that's the socks, right? But it's the chair as well. Um, it's you, you, you never lose connection mm. of literally everything else around you. Yeah. That's an interesting aspect I want to tackle as well in that class, which is this idea of you're always connected to literally everything else, whether it's consciously or or not conscious. Really fucked my mind up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, when you when you first hear about it, it's it's really something. Yeah, it's like that, whoa. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to think about that when I'm high. It's like <laughs> it's like that that gets you into some panicky. <laughs> I want to detach myself from from stuff yeah and then like for for the film i'm doing i'm trying to study a bit of like go back to a tiny bit of like like physics mm. and um quantum physics <laughs> and if you look at like uh atomic level then you actually never touch anything yeah 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 i also looked into that. At an atomic level you're that's a quote now i think from the from from the new what's it called the the oppenheimer movie Uh, that you're like 99.99% empty space. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it gets really it really <laughs> gets really fucked up very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say. Um, yeah, I don't know the scientific aspect. I'm I'm currently I'm trying to reach out to uh, scientists considering the neurological aspect of touch. Mm -hmm. um, I've reached out to uh, a guy. Oh, sadly, I forgot his name. He's a He's a doctor at uh, Max Planck Institute in German, which is like an institution for mm -hmm. neuroscience. Um, and I reached out to him. I was like, he's doing studies on pain. And I was reached out and I was like, ah, oh, can I maybe have a little chat? I'm doing this image archive. I want to uh, develop, like, I'm going to go into a little bit of the scientific aspect of touch and the sensations. And, and he was super nice. He just kindly denied <laughs> and but kindly kindly yeah. so he was like ah that's uh, very nice sounds like interesting questions but but um i don't think i'm the right uh, person to talk to it's not really my thing i'm a bit more into pain studies you might mm. want to go into sensomatic 
studies, I think was the term. And then he referred me to two of his colleagues, uh, one of which was a professor at Cambridge University. Mm. Um, and uh, I also wrote her. And from her, I got back, uh, uh, hi, Johannes. Um, the questions you're asking are below my level of expertise. <laughs> Uh, and I was like, nice. God damn. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, okay. And then she just was like, try asking ChatGPT and uh, have a nice day. <sighs> and I was like, oh my God. Okay. Thank uh, you for that. Yeah. It, so scientific aspect. Yeah, I am interested in it. But when it comes to speaking to experts on the level, <laughs> I feel like it's a bit of a, you really have to either suck up on balls or uh, not do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or you have to get lucky with the scientists you're getting. That's true. But I mean, it's also like nice maybe to keep some mystery in it and just like keep the fascination about what it is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, sure. There's always a little bit of fascination in it, right? We still haven't fully understood our brain in that sense. No, no, no um, not at all. Uh, but still, I thought it would have, would have just been nice to have like a little, ah, I've talked to this expert on that matter instead of, I've asked ChatGPT, <laughs> you know, it's like a the, the internet said the following. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just not no you no, know. no. Also, my tutor is gonna be like, Nah, bro. <laughs> that's, yeah, that sucks. Well, I get that. But scientifically speaking, how how much of like like I see all these types of sound wall mm. thingies here. How much is that part of your study? None. none. I, I I think really none. Uh, you can study like acoustics in that sense but it's a whole different like animal of studies mm. um, we kind of learn a bit in production because we just have to know like okay what like materials reflect better what is good to put in your studio yeah. how can you like if your room sounds shitty why is that you know how does sound reflect in rooms Yeah. what can you do to not have that happen so it's like They tell you about it, but it's like not scientific at all yeah, as well. Okay. It's like very like, okay, buy mattresses, put them on the walls, buy <laughs> like towels are like incredibly good. Yeah. They actually? have, I don't know why, but something about how they're made is I like really, the yeah, really rugged. So nothing like not much goes through. Like, for example, they compared towels to pillows to blankets and everything. Hmm. And towels got way le like uh, way less sound moved through towels than mm -hmm. through anything else. Interesting, but mattresses are also good just because they're like huge. Um, yeah, but you want to cover your room in mattresses, bro. A friend uh, of mine actually did. Yeah, um, yeah. Does he, he still need some? I have two mattresses. I don't need. Probably, probably. I can ask him. Like, oh, he, hit me up, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, they've been in my room for yeah, like ages now. He was, he was like here like two weeks ago, and he just told me like, man. Yesterday, like I found out how shitty my room actually sounds. Went on eBay and like bought two mattresses for like, or not bought, but got for free on eBay. Oh my god! So he just drove somewhere and then he had to carry mattresses, but they were really old ones, so they didn't have anything to hold them. So oh. he had to really like grab them and oh. put them up the like, stairs. Like this. And yeah, oh. it was not fun, but apparently it worked very well. Training grip strength. Yeah. It worked But very well. Okay, yeah, if you need some more... Uh, uh, no, <laughs> honestly, honestly, you know. honestly. No, no, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, these two have been... I have two mattresses for my bed. Uh, they have been in my room now for, like, almost a year. Just <laughs> leaning on a wall. I'm sort But of just... Your sound is probably amazing in that room, then. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really... Uh, yeah, I'm not really that, that musical in my room, I have to admit. Uh, But you are quite musical, right? You sing, you play guitar... Ooh, also piano. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. So I have I have musical background. My my both my parents studied music. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, my dad also has a career in music, and we we as in my siblings and I we were uh, like we got instruments teached uh, since like we were six or five mm. or so. Um, and I learned the violin for oh. 11 years. Interesting. Yeah, but I'm not playing it anymore. <laughs> um, and I mean, over the years, I also picked up a guitar here and there. When I moved out, I asked my parents for an electric uh, piano, like an e-piano, mm -hmm. uh, which I now also have, which is a very nice thing to just have to like doodle around. Yeah. Um, and a ukulele, and I really like singing. Uh, mm -hmm. Under the sh I like every time I shower, I sing. <laughs> Every time, sometimes uh, with my phone uh, running music, but also just me a cappella singing. Yeah, if it's a, honestly, if it's a cappella, if you're if you're sitting and or if you're standing sitting, 
if you are in the shower mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and you're singing without a music, it's also that, that you're not just singing out of sort of a muscle memory thing. I feel like when you're just reciting what you, a song you already know, uh, especially in rap music, but that's debatable singing, but like also in, in vocalized or like singing stuff, it's just like, you know the next note. You're not really thinking about what's, what, what the next note is going to be. Mm. Maybe you're adding a terz. What's third? Well, maybe you're adding a third or, or subtracting one here and there, but that's maximum you're doing, um, or at least that I'm doing. And if you just sing empty, uh, I can, I like, I just sing some la da 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 da, some la 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 di da. Um, that sort of translates into me picking up melodies from all types of songs, uh, a lot of classical actually. Um, and then sort of mashing them up. And then I have like one melody that sort of resulted out of that where I'm like, huh? <laughs> That's a nice melody. And then I yeah. grab my phone and I record the melody and I'm like, oh, yes. I'm going to do something out of that someday. I, I never do. I never do. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a bunch of melodies on my, <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> Very. But yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Also, I had that phenomena when I like try to Uh, practice for the entrance exam here and part of, like a big part of the entrance exam is singing really and I had no singing background at all I always hated singing and I never oh. did it and like then trying to like the, the the difference between memorizing things and really like I felt it really fascinating how you can memorize so many th songs and just like sing them back whenever yeah but then when you like try to really focus in on like analyzing it so much get at, at least in my brain maybe that's also a problem of mine but so much can get lost in there and you, you your brain like if you want to like uh, sing I don't know like like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or something yeah. and um, as soon as you try to okay what is that uh, in the first interval you know oh and, and oh, I these never kind of things if you <laughs> but, but there like I, I lost so much track of like oh this is actually Like, if I thought too much about it, I couldn't sing it anymore. Oh. And, like, the more I, like, try to, like, okay, okay first interval oh is a God, third. So I, I have, have to sing that, and then I cannot do it. But if I just, like, try to, like, blah, 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 walk down the street and sing it, that's fine. Ah. You know, but that was really interesting that there, my brain there, fucked me over. There are, that. like, intervals where I'm where my head is not capable of doing it automatically. Yeah. Um, so I have a... Um, One of the best examples, I think, is an Eva Cassidy song, or like song cover. You know Eva Cassidy? It was like, a, she's dead now, I think. But uh, yeah, yeah, she's dead. But uh, <laughs> she has some um, beautiful covers on like some mm -hmm. jazz or swingy standards, like Autumn Leaves or something. Yep. You know? um, and I think actually the Autumn Leaves one, uh, she does some variations in there where I, I fucking I love singing it with her. But as soon as I put her off and I tried to sing it myself there's this one interval I think it could be like a tritonos or something mm, uh, tritone tritone that is like always a bit of like a uh, <laughs> what, what is that interval yeah um, that I can never hit and then I, I and then like it's from it's from a high note to a lower note and then my lower note is wrong and I just continue because I'm like fuck I don't know where the right one right now is so I continue mm. and then the, the, everything else just gets like Shift. Wonky. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. It's really uh or also yeah, also I'm I'm currently I'm I'm more often when I'm in the shower I try to recite um one of Gustav Mahler mm. uh Kinder Totenlieder, I don't know. The, yeah, but probably that's yeah, the title. It's probably that's the title. Yeah. Like one of one of the one of the numbers in there. And it's oh it's such a beautiful piece and I'm I'm standing in the show I'm like I want to sing it I want to sing it like I don't know who it is like some some German opera singer is like singing it I'm like ah oh, ah oh. but I can't because there's like this one interval that I always get wrong and then everything else just goes sideways yeah <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell no I totally get that but could I ask you how did you get into carpentry to begin with like what oh, how did you start that, on yeah. that <laughs> back to the back to the roots back to the roots um I finished high school very early, so mm -hmm. I I uh, turned 17, and I turned 17 in May, mm -hmm. and that was the same 
back in and then in June in the following June I finished my A levels. So I was very mm-hmm. uh very early on that and then I got out of school and I was like okay what now? Um or basically already in the last phases of school I was like okay what am I going to do once I'm done? Yeah. My friends were going to go study um one of my best friends studies um machine engineering I think mm-hmm. is the English title of it uh in Aachen. Other friends study product design in Aachen. Um <laughs> Anyway, some some studied ITs in BVL, you know, like the the Standard. generic type of stuff. And um yeah, one of my friends moved to Belgium to study game art. Mm-hmm. Uh she is now almost done. Um she's in her um practicum, like in her apprenticeship or like no, internship. No, no, like internship, yeah. She's in her internship, sorry for that. And um basically after that i think it's like only one semester and then she's done mm. uh and for her, from her i sort of got the idea to study abroad as well um my first plan was to just go abroad work and travel uh i didn't want to do australia because i felt like that was like a posh white girl white girl thing to do um i wanted to do south korea mm-hmm. and i actually already applied for some jobs on um for instance a farm i was going to go on a, like a, a multi vegetable farm thingy i had contact with the plantation owner and like who was like just this old guy with his wife and like they were taking work and travelers in to work on their farm with them in the in the season mm-hmm. um and we had established contact and I was like oh yeah hell yeah it's good um and then i went to the uh, korean embassy to get a or i wanted to go there to get a visa a visa but they were like uh oh, covid we're not letting anyone in Yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh, fuck's sake. And then I was a bit depressed for a while. And um then I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm gonna I need to do something. My mom was also like my mom was itching <laughs> to hit me if, <laughs> if I'm not gonna do something right now. So, um no, I love my mom. Uh <laughs> but um yeah, so then we looked around a little bit. Um and i thought of all types of stuff actually uh but a friend of my dad um or like a, a buddy of my dad at the time was a carpenter uh he was the son-in-law of my boss mm. um but he quit later on because of an injury he got uh and then um yeah through that person we sort of got the apprenticeship uh, at that carpentry shop it was a very old one uh very very beautiful really really very beautiful if sometimes i really wish to go back there uh because it was such like it was such a serene scenery like mm. it was so pleasantly beautiful a, a little bit outside uh in the hilly lands of uh, bergisches land um oh yeah that's nice and then and then you would you would come up there i would have this 30 minute bike ride in the morning and uh on autumn days you know i would go up the the like serpentines serpentines yeah is that the actual translation i think it? so yes all right the the curvy the Ma- curvy maybe roads. not maybe i'm just totally bullshitting but well, I, i well, think i mean we're going with serpentines at yeah. this point I, i'm fine with that i was going up the serpentines because the workshop was on a hill um and there was like this last curve in the serpentine where i could stop for like a moment and especially in autumn and in spring where the sun was getting up uh, at sort of the same time like i don't know like 7:45 in the morning <clears throat> i was stopping there and i was just looking over like uh foresty hills and like autumn colors and the sun rising oh yeah that's oh, beautiful my god bro oh, and i could just like i just stand there for like five to ten minutes and then i go um to the workshop which which was directly attached to my old boss's uh, house and uh, they had a beautiful backyard because his wife was really into gardening and mm. and then I I would just park my bike in their backyard and then go into the workshop and it was this old like really old machines no one's there you know the boss comes in like half an hour later to then slap some work on me but I have this like morning moments you know it's like it's comparable to the coffee in the morning or something yeah. where it's like this you know really free space uh breathable space and there's this smell of like pine wood or like some cut oak or something you know really nice nicely cut oak 
you're sitting there like, oh my God. And it's so quiet, you know, it's quiet. The sun is shining low. The colors outside are beautiful. And I do all types of work there, you know. I'm not just a carpenter, I'm also the guy who climbs on the roof to fix the draining pipes. I'm the guy who, like, we cut down a tree. Mm. We just completely cut down a tree in, in basically the middle of the road. It just, like, it was a curve, there was a tree, and we just cut it down and the tree fell on top of the curved roads. It was super dangerous, super stupid to do. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have told this, but <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, I it's it was private, private ground. Um, Perfect. But still, uh, all types of stuff, you know, also me being like 17 and 18, I was, I was coming straight out of high school. I was, yeah. I had enough of school and then getting this like hands on crafty work, creating something, but at the same time, just like doing something that is productive. Mm. Uh, that is somehow connected to nature, somehow outside, but also somehow inside. Uh, you know, my my boss would would also like one time he just, for instance, brought this log, like from from a forester friend or something, uh, and he just placed the log like basically in the driveway, and then he told me, "Ah, oh, you uh, Johannes, go get the chainsaw, get the axe, make some firewood," and I spent like four hours or something like 17 year old me you know look at me like 17 year old me is like 45 kilos you know i, I like fucking go grab the grab a massive ass chainsaw like a massive axe and i stand there like i feel like the man you know you're yeah. standing there like sawing down tree things and you're chopping them into little pieces and you're staking them on top and then at the end of the day sun is getting low it's cold outside it's you know it's like autumn time we're prepping for winter and i've like prepared this wall of firewood Aww. and we just you know it's like it's beautiful it's man. really these simple things that i really miss actually because this is so this place here is so buzzy yep so um yeah i mean it's it's an it's an it's an educational institute right it's like a a lot of people a lot of people all over each other like when i'm in the workshops when i'm in the wood workshop here it feels almost like a like a office yeah uh it's like glass walls everywhere and people are roaming around everyone's doing their own little thing and no one's really working on something together and you have the authority in Wouter, for instance, in the wood workshop, which is the the head guy of the wood workshop, who is quite a strict authority, but also is not doesn't have this vibe of being touchable in some sort of sense. Mm. Like doesn't have a I can't really form a connection with him. Mm. Maybe that's because of the language barrier, or uh, because uh, he doesn't like me, or because I don't like him. I don't know. But the, like there's something there's something that is not as connected as me as an apprentice being connected to my old boss, mm. my old master, you know, I could, I can say master actually in that yeah. sense. Um, I really miss this. I, I get that. I, I, I totally get that. I feel like what you describe is so beautiful and this aspect of like just slowing down yeah. is, is something I also really miss sometimes. Yeah. And the color, it, the, the, the sunlight shining. I mean, Germany is not the most beautiful weather country. Um, it I'd argue. Moment I'd argue it's more beautiful than the Netherlands, uh, <laughs> country-wise. Um, we, we have some more hills, for, at least. Yeah, yeah, uh, especially that region at home. And then, I don't know, man. I just, yeah. I think one of the main things is the people, the the amount of people. You know, it's it's a blessing and a curse. I feel like at the same time, it's you can get so much input from international students mm. from places all over the world. I've made great friends here as well, where I'm like. This is awesome that I got to know this person and that I can spend time with that person. Um, but at the same time, it can also just very quickly, for me at least, become so so numbingly much. Yep. Um, yeah. Also being actively now, being purely actively in a, a creatively active, um, something I'm also a bit overwhelmed by, I think. I don't, I don't think, like, when I look around my class, there's, for instance, one of my uh, class buddies who is an incredibly creative person. And uh, he, like, once he gets his fingers on some topic, he just can't stop. He's like, Whoa. and then he goes like, ah, 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 and then he busts into conversations like, ah, guys, uh, here, um, my thing. Uh, you know, it's, like, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's a bit annoying, but most of the time <laughs> it's really cute to watch. Yeah. And it's also, like, he does such great things. Um, and I'm feeling like 
like it, this place for him is beautiful because it's non-stop be creative like non-stop for me i feel like sometimes i can really take a break of the creative aspect of it um i might not just be the type of character that needs constant creative output um i don't have so many uh, crazy ideas mm. that that i want to that i feel the urge to transform into something real um but for him it's a different completely different story right and it's beautiful to see these people who work but it's also can be intimidating a little bit or overwhelming when you're like oh i am not that creative i feel like that's a feeling almost everyone in the study at, like probably in the soul university gets at some or multiple points that damn why am i not so creative or yeah. or uh, why is that person so creative and not me um yeah and that's some that's a thought i've had like recently uh, a lot when i feel a little bit exhausted of my creative output when i want to go slow down things or yeah. do some things that are not creative um yeah also music wise right my whole family at home still does music and then occasionally i come back and we're like ah you want to jam with us together and i'm like back in the day i would have been yeah, like when i was at carpentry i would have been like heck yeah let's go but now i feel creatively exhausted yeah i feel like i i, I can't come up with something now i'm i i'm coming up with shit every day mm. uh and i'm i'm just i feel yeah my storage of creativity is is actively being exhausted in the school um sort of limit testing i guess yeah no i i, I get that i mean for us it's it's quite similar i would say like the whole point of composition is to create things yeah. out of nothing technically but nobody creates out of nothing is always yeah inspiration yeah, yeah. stealing and everything together but I, i i totally agree i think for me it's 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 quite similar that you just have moments where like okay i have no idea anymore you know i i put everything into this i just need a bit of time and i think that is where i also like this year tried Or I still am trying to <laughs> kind of find a balance. Yeah, um, you seem like a little bit of a workaholic, to be honest. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I, I feel that too. But like sometimes I also have these moments where I need that, where I just feel like, oh, I, I like, I know I cannot sit down and just read a book for an hour most of the times. Mm. I just, I know my brain goes places. And then when I started reading for five minutes, I'm like, oh, this is cool, I want to do this and sit down at my computer again and start working on music again because just like, I don't know, my brain is working weirdly there. But also I have moments where I just would like to sit down and watch a movie, <laughs> um, you know, and have this balance to, to just do that. What I tried now is, and I've done that three times, so I didn't wouldn't want to call it a routine, but I, I started sometimes do like in the evening do workouts mm -hmm. and then go into yoga And then meditation before going to bed because mm -hmm. that was for me at least the hardest thing was going to bed. Um, really? Yes, because my my brain just doesn't stop thinking. Yeah. And I have extreme trouble remembering things nowadays, so I have like these little notebooks that I carry everywhere where I just yeah. write down everything that I have a thing to think about today and the next day and like <laughs> pack this 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 for today. I have like okay pack. You know, I have the podcast shoot, so yeah. I need to pack my camera. I need to pack the charger. I need to pack my pack my like MacBook to yeah. see uh, to to record and everything. And all of these thoughts just like keep coming. So, like for the past year, a lot of times in the evening, what I was used to do was just watch shitty YouTube videos. Oh my god! And just like don't do that, bro. Yeah, I, I just yeah. like sat in, like laid in my bed, put on one earbud, and just like put on shitty nah, music, bro. Uh, like oh, YouTube no. videos to just like get numb in, yourself to yeah, sleep yeah numb yourself to sleep oh, that that sounds so fucking unhealthy man <laughs> holy shit it probably is but th this is like how I managed to because yeah. for the other times it was that I like was exhausted at like nine uh, like one or two mm. at night but now I have classes at nine in the morning so I have to get up at six thirty or something right you have to cross borders yeah again. but yeah. Even without, it would be like not much of a difference. But yeah. I have to wake up early, and I want to wake up early to build a routine. Um, Clara there inspired me a lot to yeah. like find your productive time. But I have my productive time in the morning and in the night, so I have to kind of find the balance. And you have two. Would you say you have like productivity hotspots throughout the day? Yes, like one in the morning and one in the night. Yes, I I, I get extremely shitty around two to three 
midday. Yeah. I, I just my PM. creativity loses everything. Yeah. But these are then the times where I try to sit down and do something that is more like craftsmanship yeah. and not creative. Like creatively I'm best in the morning and in the night. But yeah, these workouts really help me to like free my mind. Yeah. And then I'm also like exhausted from the workout, so I go into yoga, which just like helps still move, yeah, but focus. And then the meditation is just pure focus, and then also getting a bit into like the headspace of calmness. What do you do when you're meditating? Like, what is what is what is your approach to meditation? I, I don't really have one. I just listen. Just it's 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 uh it's I'm I have this Nike training app. Uh-huh. And they have meditation exercises, so I just listen to the person, and then follow instructions. I follow instructions, and yeah. I have ambient music playing. Okay, but interesting. I I did like my my parents wanted me to do some uh, some training in that when I was younger mm -hmm. because I was just like as a kid I just ADHD. Did, yeah, <laughs> I I never got tested for that. And my parents say probably I don't have it. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, but at this point, does it matter? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. But I like always did like three things at the same time yeah. to get myself to like this stimulation level I needed. You know, yeah. I read a book and read an audio, like listen to an audio book while playing Legos. What the because fuck? one thing just wasn't enough, and I got bored. Jesus. And um, so my my parents wanted me to do like some training where we just like laid on the floor and listened to like an audio CD of like mm. getting calm and getting focused. Mm. I got so bored there. So I'm I'm really happy that now, like when I do the workouts after a hard day of work, that I'm so exhausted that I really can feel yeah. that now I can focus in. Wonderful, man. But this is like kind of where I found now a certain <laughs> type of balance mm. to like try to, because I also feel what you're saying that sometimes you just like feel like the battery's out. You just yeah. don't have anything in yourself anymore. And I feel like it is very frustrating, especially with school that you always see the creative people doing creative things and then you have the day where you're like I can't figure out two notes at the same yeah, time yeah why are they doing that but you just don't also don't see the downtime from them yeah and you also don't realize you I feel like you you see even less your own uptime yeah I think um, it's so easy to when you're in your downtime to look around you and realize oh my god they're all they're all like performing all the fucking time yeah. but when you're in your uptime you're not really looking around and seeing how other people perform right it's more like a, oh, I'm performing right now like let's fucking go let's mm. bum, 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 bum. and then it's then you're the one performing and yeah. then it might very well be that around you there are people that are just in their downtime it's a it's a constant up and down mm. all the time but I I think everybody working at least in the creative industry but probably every human has that feeling that oh why are they so much better why are they doing this better and like I'm not it's sure man i think there are also people who are very full of themselves of course yeah <laughs> true <laughs> good point but yeah i i, I agree i think mo mostly and it's, uh, i also like i talked with somebody about this i think it was yeah it was six missing like a composer from from the us and he said that a lot of things also happen there through social media because that also like um, put extra uh, attention on the good things you know mm -hmm. you only post the moments you do something cool you are happy you go for like a holiday you do some cool work you did this photo shoot whatever your entirety of social media is just cool shit yeah it's just the highlights yeah. but if you just look at those, then the lows also feel like for, for personally your lows. Then are like, why I'm not doing this, you yeah, know? Yeah. So like this, this, this highlighting of 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 just, uh, yeah, it sounds really highlighting of highlights, you know. And the focus on that is, is I'm not crazy. Doing, I'm not doing any social media. Okay. Like I have an Instagram. Um, I'm not gonna link my Instagram. You might maybe link my Instagram. If you want to, I can. I, I mean, I don't, yeah, you can. Um, and I like recently I was like, okay, I'm gonna reactivate my Instagram um, because I've done some projects I was a bit proud of, and I was like, I'm gonna you know, sort of wanna. I did some nice photo shoots. I sort of wanna do some nice posts, yeah. and I did some nice posts. I like my posts now, but um, at the same time I was like, I was installing the app again on my phone, and I catch myself like after the first week or something, I was already like app usage of like two hours a day or something. And I was like, okay. Fuck no. <laughs> uh, the uninstalled it again, like after a couple of weeks, because I was like, I, I, I just, this is sucking me in so quickly. Mm. 
I think I really have a thing for that actually. Also for right now it's YouTube. Mm. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like when you when you just were like, okay, I, you you fall asleep to like some crappy YouTube videos. Um, I did that as well a lot, and I fucking hated it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like this. It's like this falling asleep with just white noise in your head mm. instead of instead of having a calm head you have a white noise head yeah but white noise to me is not calmness right not at all but how do you get calmness i used to do karate okay. for um i think a total of six years mm. uh, while i was a teenager so going through puberty i learned a lot in in our dojo it was a very very nice dojo karate gemeinschaft bergisch gladbach <laughs> Uh, shout out to that now. <laughs> um, no, but no, really an incredibly nice dojo, incredibly nice people, and uh, helped me develop a lot throughout my teenage years uh, in a lot of things. And one of the things was meditation. So, this idea of um, you, you cannot think of nothing. Uh, there's this, there's this myth, I think that, or like this idea. I mean, maybe there are different approaches. I'm gonna say there's this approach that you try to think of nothing um, during your meditation to try to empty your head. But I personally don't believe that that's possible. I think your head will always come up with something. So the idea is to whatever is you like whatever comes into your head to just don't grab a hold of it, let it go instantly. Okay. So if you imagine your if you imagine your thought process like a highway mm. that runs through through your head yeah. and you're like some sort of traffic helicopter or something and you're like spotting you're like oh this is an interesting thought and it's a yellow truck and then you're like <laughs> camera on the yellow truck and you follow the yellow truck yeah. and then he takes a cur curve and like there's a bunch of yellow trucks now and it's like oh wow what is this uh, that's sort of how your head works mm. in my opinion um, and. If you are in control of the camera, you can also just look at every car only a millisecond. Mm. Like let everything, you don't move the camera. It just goes whoop, 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 whoop. Um, and that's, that's how I learned to meditate. Mm. And also like being a 16 year old, you know, you come from a incredibly boring school day uh, and you go to the dojo and you get beaten up for like two hours. Uh, and then at the end, at the beginning and at the end of each training session, we used to meditate for like, not long, 20 seconds. Um, the idea is that you meditate for the amount of time it takes a leaf to fall from the tree to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and you just close your eyes, you sit, everyone sits in a row, uh, you hear a gong, you wait for the command, you, clo you close your eyes, you wait, you wait for the next command, you open your eyes, you bow down, you jump up, You do another greeting and then the training's over. And these like last 20 seconds are really like you feel everything. You're you you need to your breath is still going <laughs> right and you need to calm yourself down. Like if you're crying in the training, you need to calm yourself from crying. You need to uh it's over now. You know, mm. it's like this, it's over now. It's good, you're survived, it's okay. Uh and then it's these 20 seconds of silence and everyone's just it's like this oh I fucking love it and um so it's beautiful yeah and uh that's how i meditate if i meditate um i've had panic attack struggles over the last couple of months um so meditation came back into my life a little bit mm -hmm. um because when yeah panic attack fucking horrible it's like it's like a at least for me it was like a um, you're catching onto one car and then you're you're like up close on that car you forget every other car but that car is like shooting at your camera or something it's like it's like you're you're watching at something destroying you and it's so in like you you cannot look away it's like such a grip on it has such a grip on you and you can see how it's fucking uh yeah poking holes in your brain um but you can't look away And yeah, meditation is then to actively try to let go of that thought again. Because when you're thinking of like, I'm gonna panic, I'm gonna panic, I'm gonna panic, I'm gonna panic, then the actual yep. panic attack is just the the fear of getting a panic, getting attack. a panic attack, and you're just spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. It happens so quickly, 
it can happen so quickly and then it's really you need to you need to see it when it comes early and then you need to try to move as early away from it as possible mm. or just let go of it uh one of the things i then talked with my therapist about was the idea of um being like okay you know the first thought comes like oh symptom here like uh i feel like my heart right now a little bit more than i'm used to feel it so that's a sign a uh, panic attack i'm gonna have a panic attack and then eventually I'm, i don't recommend this to everyone who like just now experiences panic attacks but um eventually we started to approach the panic attack in a way of letting it come so my head tells me you're gonna have a panic attack ah and i tell my head okay bring it And then I sort of try to actively be like, okay, let me see the panic attack. <laughs> Show me. And surprisingly enough, whenever I did that, the panic attack didn't show up. Because it was so often just the fear of the panic attack that then spirals into the panic attack. Mm. And then when I feel like, uh oh, my head is screaming at me, um, I'm gonna be like, okay, yeah. Show me what you got. Bring it. I can, I'm fine. I can deal with it. Um, even though I don't believe I can. Um, like in that moment, I think like, oh, if I'm gonna have a panic attack now, I'm gonna fucking lose my shit. <laughs> like, I'm gonna die. Mm. Um, but uh, I'm forcing myself to be like, okay, bring it. And then it doesn't come. And that was like, that was one of the first moments where I thought like, holy shit therapy man <laughs> yes <laughs> wow bro <laughs> therapy works works wonders yeah, yeah. I, i only had like one panic attack in my life i think yeah and i also only had one therapy session <laughs> it was also f in front of my uh entrance ex exam yeah because i with singing i had a lot of like struggle struggle and anxiety i also like had singing lessons when i was 13 but quit because i was too afraid to sing yeah, and voice cracks also then age, age 30 yeah but just like, just i i don't know I, i couldn't sing at home because i was scared that my parents or my neighbors would hear me oh just uh, yeah. for no reason yeah but uh, then um, i was super scared of the exam because like this was the school i wanted to go to this was the school my friends will go to so mm. i need to pass this you know yeah. it's like the last border and i i failed a test exam in the november before oh so it was like okay <laughs> fuck now now do or die and it was online mm. and the internet was not that great and then like uh i was also like just hella nervous and then you know the guy put his piano like his laptop on the piano so it distorts so you have to be like could you, could you repeat that oh my god and then you start thinking like oh shit now he thinks i didn't know but i just couldn't hear and then uh, there i i also went into a panic attack and yeah. like failed uh oh, afterwards man. because of that And then I um, had to do a reset. I had like four weeks to do it again, and that was like my last final chance to Crazy. get into school or not. Yeah. And these four weeks, man, were like probably one of the most interesting times in my life. I would say. You developed a lot. I developed so much. I learned so much about me. Yeah. But I also my my mom actually suggested to go to therapy, because she knew somebody that helps with like. Uh, anxiety in front of exams for school mm -hmm. for, for for students and I did that the same thing so what I did there was like I drew a picture of like a nice moment I remembered or like a nice moment I wanted to be in mm -hmm. and to just like really draw out this picture and find yourself in that situation and then we we build up a trigger that like helped me get into this this mindset I had like this moment in time where Actually, for for the first time, me and my friends we drove to Arnhem, mm -hmm. so we were sitting in the car and like listening to music together and just like driving in the morning to visit the city where I would like to be Studying, for the yeah. next four years. Yeah. And so we developed this trigger of like me pumping the gas pedal, that would like help me to relax and to get into this mindset. Mm -hmm. And um, it was also the same, like similar to you, where she told me like, let's we, we what we have to fix is get you out of this. I need to be there now. I need to get to that school, but just say fuck it. You know, if yeah. I don't make it, cool. Yeah. You know, don't, don't doesn't doesn't matter. So that was also super super helpful. The therapy, and I can only like tell everybody if if you oh have some, something, please. Yes. It is 
so incredibly helpful. One hundred percent. So important because some things you just cannot do on your own. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I remember, um, you know, one of the things is also like, oh, if I'm gonna, like, I feel like one of the fears of therapy is this idea of it's a shameful thing. Yeah. Or it's something that that like maybe shows weakness or also one of my fear my first fears ever when i uh the first time i wanted to do therapy was when i was i think 18 i was doing my apprenticeship and uh one of my friends at school had killed himself and the covid time isolation a lot like everything built up on its on itself and i was starting to get really depressed yeah um and i was thinking about okay fuck uh like I was, I mean, I wasn't actively thinking about it, but occasionally, or like eventually I was just like, okay, I'm gonna need to do some, something about it. Like need to talk to someone about it. Mm. Um, and I was so afraid of telling my mom that I wanted to do therapy because I was, I, I thought that she would react in this way of, she would, re she would react supportively. I, I knew that she would gonna, she was gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, do it. But I also thought she was gonna like talk herself down as in, where did I go wrong as yeah, a parent? Yeah, it's my mistake. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. As it as, as if it's like the parent's mistake um, that the child wants to have therapy. Mm. Um, but eventually, like w we were in a car uh, and we were we were already we were on our way back home. And I started the topic, uh, uh, not the therapy topic, but just like we were talking. And then we parked the car in front of our house and we just sat in the parked car for over an hour, just having a talk. And mm. throughout that talk, I was like, "Mom, I think." I want to have therapy. And she reacted, I think, in the best way you can. Write. She was like, oh, yeah, sure thing. There's like this, uh, there's there's therapy down in town. Like, oh, it's a cool mm. thing. I also had therapy when I was your age. No problem. I was like, wow. I, I came so unexpected. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was really, I think. It's the best thing you can do. I think that's how every parent like should react to yeah. that as well. It's like, a, it's not a big thing. Yeah, taking therapy is not a it's not a it's not a big thing. It's not, I mean, it's a life changing. But every day can be a life changing day. It's not something to be like, especially aware of. I mean, I think it's 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 good and important to like normalize it. You know, it's yeah. like you have to go to the dentist just because this is how it is because you need to take care of your teeth. Yeah, and it's the same you with your brain. Need to take care of your mind as well and and of your body. You need to do sports. Uh, or movement, or go to the doctor, or physio, or whatever. Uh, and if if you're not doing one of the, let's say three things, let's include the dentist. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna do too well. Yeah. Or there's a risk that you're not gonna do too well. Yeah, man. That's Therapy. great. Therapy is, <laughs> is incredible. Yes. I have one more question for you that is also a bit more psychological, yeah, if shoot. you would like to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm asking you that every time at the end of the podcast, and yeah. there's sometimes really, really interesting things. I have I read this book about uh, museum lives, uh, and it's this concept that uh, after you die, um, you have this thing where you go into a museum and you can watch your life in a museum. So mm -hmm. it's the museum of you. Yeah. And in that museum, it actually, like, accurately portrays how you spent your life. Yeah. So, hopefully, one third of that museum will be filled with sleep because you sleep eight <laughs> hours a day, ish. You know, but ish. exactly how you spend your time. If you mm -hmm. did like these two hours of Instagram for that certain time, it's going to be there oh in this god. moment. Oh my god. So, what oh it's supposed god. to do is like this reflection of how you spend your time and yeah. how you want to spend your time and what you would like in your museum and that will be my question to you if you want to answer is what do you think you would like to have in your museum is there something that you feel like would be in there that you don't want in there that you would like to change mm. what do you think about it I generally think generally think that um, the idea of regretting that you made or that you that you did something is sort of a bit foreign to me mm. Uh, because everything you do leads to who you are now, right? Yeah. Um, and me doing this mistake or doing these mistakes of uh, spending so much time on YouTube, Instagram, social media, whatsoever, uh, staring at a screen, uh, being on my own, um, not actually creating valuable memory. I think 
uh, since I'm still not changing from that, or not changing from it to the degree I want to change from it, uh, it's not. I don't think it's gonna be over yet. And I think I need, for some reason, I need to do <coughs> this longer until until I reach a point where I just can't do it anymore. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't take out these moments of the museum. I wouldn't take anything out of the museum. Um, but I would certainly highlight a few things. Uh, definitely. There are, uh, yeah, I mean, everyone sort of probably has their memories that are like really important to them or like really uh, beautiful in hindsight. Um, there are a few memories within the face of uh, my depression where I was like on my way back from my carpentry workshop um, driving over the highway, stopping at highway bridges and like just standing at the highway bridge, uh, like weird moments. Um, and in the moment that they happen, very sad moments, but in hindsight, also very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting combination. Um, those are some things I would like to highlight. Uh, I, last summer I spent a vacation with my girlfriend in Slovenia, holy shit, best vacation I ever had. Um, Beautiful, really, really nice. There are a bunch of, bunch of things there that I really, uh, really would like to highlight as well. I'm not gonna name anything on, because you I don't, don't know how to. much she wants to have that share. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, it's interesting. I don't think career-wise anything. Um, I don't think any production of anything, any any project, any any furniture I made. Um, I think it's a lot more about experiences with myself mm -hmm. or experiences with people that are dear to me. Um, yeah, and especially like there's, I mean, right now I'm 21, right? Everything in my life happened before I was 21. So, uh, yeah, you, <laughs> it's, it's very- It's gonna be condensed anyway. Yeah, it's a very teenager uh, life um, that I can recall now, so. But yeah, especially throughout the time of being a teenager, so much changes inside of you and inside your worldview on things or um, your view in general on also smaller things. Uh, and I would really like to relive some of those moments again. To, there, because there are some moments where I felt like revelation, mm -hmm. um, like a moment where, where something cleared up to me. There's this quote, um, es sind die kleinen Dinge im Leben. It's the, it's the little things in life. Uh, you know this quote. You understand the meaning of that quote. Uh, I think most people do. Um, but there's a difference in understanding logically the meaning behind it, but also feeling that quote mm -hmm. emotionally. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's just a me thing, um, but there has been one life, one, one moment in my life that sort of made me realize that I actually, truly, and full, fully believe in this quote. Like 100%, 100 everything in my being is believing in this, believing in this idea of Beautiful. it's the little things. Um, and that sort of kicked me out of my depression, that gave me really, really, big boosts in, in joy and, and what I want to experience in my life, which is happiness. I just want, I think, I think everyone wants that. Um, I think everyone, everyone's way towards that is different, but I think everyone wants just happiness. Mm. And uh, whether that's career, whether that's love life, whether that's solitary beauty in nature or whatever, I don't care. I just want happiness. <laughs> uh, and that's something I figured out when I was like 18, same time, in the middle of a depression, uh, lowest point ever. And then I figure that stuff out, which makes it really beautiful to me. Yeah. So that's something, if, if my life would end tomorrow, this, is, this moment would probably be number one. Wow. Of, of, of what I think is, uh, is important in my life is that that figuring because I'd be fine dying tomorrow because I know it's about the little things and I've had wonderful little things. So 
I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't wanna die tomorrow. So it's not the plan. Uh, but 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 if it's all right. If a lightning hits me tomorrow, so be it. So be it. I don't give a damn. Yeah. Beautiful man. Thank you so much. Hey, it was a pleasure, bro. It was it was super nice. <laughs> it was I a loved pleasure. it.